This time in Eric Draws Microscopy, we're going to be talking about image formation and how our images are formed via very different mechanisms in SEM and in TEM. So in SEM, Our electrons come down the column from the electron gun. Strike our sample. And then a number of things occur. One of those things that happens is that secondary electrons are generated. And those secondary electrons can be detected with an Eberhard Thornley secondary detector. Now, the Eberhard Thornley secondary detector typically will have a charge cage around it. This helps get those secondary electrons to come towards it. The other location that detectors typically are is in lens. This is where you'll see your backscatter detectors as well as in lens secondary detectors. And what they'll do is just analyze the electrons that come straight back up. Now in a typical SEM picture, as you've probably noted previously, it's always in grayscale. Now that is because within the software of the imaging computer, all of those electron interactions are either rated as a zero number of interactions, which would be viewed as black, or the processor within the detector gets maxed out in which case it would give the value of one, yielding a very bright white color. However, in most cases, we get some value in between these two numbers, which gives us a various shades of gray. Now, TEM works quite a bit differently. In TEM, our electron gun is very similar to a flashlight in this case. And we can think of this as making shadow puppets with our hands. Where the flashlight gives us light, we then put an object in front of it. And then we see what hasn't transmitted through our object. such as a dog, if you held your hand in the right way. So in TEM, the electron gun is at the top of the column, comes down, strikes our sample, and then whatever electrons are able to pass through are then seen with a camera. In the case of TEM, the varying grays that you see in those images are primarily related to varying heights within your object in which case, if you have a taller region, it's gonna seem darker, and thinner regions will seem brighter. And that's because these thick regions make it 
much less likely that our electron beam can pass through in comparison to the thinner regions. Another cause for difference in color in your grayscale and TEM is the density of your material. In this case, if you had different zones within what you were analyzing, something composed out of something that's very heavy, such as iron, would be much more efficient at not letting all of that electron beam through in comparison to something that has a much lower electron density, such as carbon. So in this case, the region that has a lot of iron in it would be viewed as darker. And the area with the carbon would be seen as a lot lighter. And that's how you get your different images in SEM and TEM. Thank you for joining Eric Draws Microscopy.